for a new beginning in a safe, comfortable place and an opportunity to chart a new course. This new home should be your sanctuary, your happy place. What is happening here today is not a, a handout or a gift to the people. It's really an investment in the people by the, by the government. And you have a responsibility to maintain these places. The HTC team must be commended for delivering modern, attractive, affordable housing units to deserving families despite the country's economic challenges which continue to impact the housing construction sector. Good evening ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the national anthem of our beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago played by Obadeli Alec of the Massey Trinidad All-Stars Steel Orchestra. Please remain standing for a prayer by Father Martin Serju, Administrator of the Cathedral of the Immaculate Conception. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Jesus made a tour through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing all kinds of diseases and sickness. And when he saw the crowds, he felt sorry for them because they were harassed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is rich, but the laborers are few. So ask the Lord of the harvest to send laborers to his harvest. Matthew 9, 35 to 37. God of all peoples, God of all nations, we thank you for this East Port of Spain Regeneration Project, the HTC, and all parties who conceived of it. We are tired of hearing places referred to as disadvantaged communities or hotspots when we are already in the hotspot of the pandemic. We want a richer life and more humane conditions of social intercourse. Forgive us when we have forgotten when we have allowed communities to go into decline and neglect. Forgive us for paying short shrift to education and community solidarity. Enable us to find hard data on the levels of poverty in East Port of Spain, the configuration of family life, the health of families, the number of working poor and the differently able. May this East Port of Spain project build on these so as to truly enhance life in the long term. Let this evening be an evening of listening and not just hearing, of give and take, 
in a spirit of compromise and respect and fraternal charity. May we continue to follow the three W's in keeping ourselves safe, washing hands, wearing face masks, and watching social distance. And let's not forget our planet Lord. Help us to regenerate in Piccadilly and Bissau Street as far as is possible, little green spaces where we can leave green footprints, not just for ourselves, but for our children and grandchildren to inherit. Amen. Blessings. Shalom. Thank you, Father Seju. Ladies and gentlemen, you may be seated. Once again, good evening, Trinidad and Tobago, and welcome to this public consultation on the Piccadilly and Besson Streets East Port of Spain Urban Regeneration Project. Thank you for joining us. My name is Colin Graves, and I have been invited by the HTC to moderate this evening's event. We are coming to you live from the auditorium of the government campus plaza, downtown Port of Spain. Actually, you know, we're not too far from the areas which we'll be actually be discussing tonight. And as we observe all COVID-19 protocols, we are once again happy to have you virtually with us via TTT and on the HDC's Facebook page. We're also live on radio on I-95.5 FM, 91.1 FM, and on 91.9 FM. Now, because we're covering all of the bases for virtual participation, we're very happy tonight to have a special group of participants of about 500 people who are here with us via Zoom this evening, and we will hear from them a bit later in this consultation. But I'm excited. Why? Because tonight, we have a really great panel here to present, to get your feedback, and more importantly, to answer your questions about the proposed regeneration project for Piccadilly Street, Besson Street, and East Port of Spain. At this time, I'd like to introduce our panelists. The Honorable Penelope Beckles, MP and Minister of Housing and Urban Development. His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, Mayor of Port of Spain. The Honorable Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South. Ms. Jacel McFarlane, the Managing Director of the Housing Development Corporation, the HDC. And Mr. Nigel Barrow, Senior Manager, Urban Planning at the HDC. Also, I'd like to say a special good evening to Woman Superintendent Lancaster Ellis of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, who is with us via Zoom tonight and will participate in our Q&A segment a bit later. In addition to our speakers here, we'd also like to rec recognize the following guests joining us virtually. Online, we have Senator the Honorable Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development and Family Services, and as well as other government ministers and MPs. We're also joined tonight by the Deputy Mayor of Port of Spain, the CEO and member of the, members of the Port of Spain City Corporation, Mr. Noel Garcia, the HDC Chairman, TTPS representatives and representatives from the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services and other stakeholders. So, what is this all about? Well, this consultation is all about you, the stakeholders, especially those who live and work in the community. Tonight is about giving you an opportunity to add your voice to the conversation about the revitalization plans for Piccadilly Street, Besson Street, and East Port of Spain. Tonight's event will communicate the proposed plan and provide a platform for you to express your feelings, voice your concerns, and ask your questions. So here's how tonight will run. We'll first have a round of opening remarks from the Mayor of Port of Spain, the Member of Parliament for the area, and the Minister of Housing and Urban Development. They will provide context and background to the project from their perspective and their various roles. Then, We'll have a presentation by the HDC where they would go into the actual design and elements of the proposed plan. Following that, we'd open up the floor and you'd be invited to ask questions and provide feedback on the project. Sounds good, right? Well, let's get the ball rolling with our first speaker. I now invite the Mayor of Port of Spain, His Worship, Alderman Joel Martinez, to deliver remarks.
Thank you very much. The Honorable Penelope Beckles, Minister of Housing and Urban Development. Minister of the Honorable Donna Cox, who is on virtually, Minister of Social Development and Family Services. Other ministers and MPs who are following online. Member of Parliament, Mr. Keith Scotland from Port of Spain South, Deputy Mayor Hilan Morian, and members of Council of the Port of Spain Corporation, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the Tran Tobago Housing Development Corporation, Ms. Gina, J, Ms. Jaisal McFarlane, the HTC Managing Director, representatives from the East Port of Spain Development Company Limited and the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, Udicott, stakeholders from the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services, residents and business owners from East Port of Spain, other members of the viewing and listening audience, good afternoon or good evening all. Our capital city is fresh off of celebrating a beautifully successful virtual city week for its 107th anniversary. This year, the theme for City Week centered on the idea of unity coming through together as the guiding principle of, for our recovery during this pandemic. Unity through partnership is crucial to our lives going forward, especially among our citizens, the government, its agencies, and other entities. This is one reason for our public consultation this evening. We view you, the citizen, as our major stakeholders, and your voice is therefore important to any development within our capital city. Our Prime Minister, Dr. The Honorable Keith Rowley, has been leading a major revitalization program for the city of Port of Spain. This is a move which the Council of Port of Spain fully supports, especially since our goal has been to bring people back into the capital city. And as the Prime Minister has said, revitalization would not exclude the citizens who live in Port of Spain. This evening, it therefore brings me great pleasure to welcome you to listen and invite your views on the future development of East Port of Spain and our plans to implement an urban regenera regeneration project in that space. Its first phase will focus on Piccadilly and Bessor Streets, the project intention is to transform, develop, and breed new life into this area. You may remember that some months ago, we hosted a similar public consultation for Arapita Avenue with the same objective. As the world becomes more urbanized, the number of people living in urban spaces is expected to increase. In fact, the United Nations believes that the number of people living in urban centers will increase to 6.5 billion by 2050. To accommodate this, these incoming populations, popular cities like Paris, New York, and Tokyo are building more housing and more public resources like recreational and commercial spaces, schools, and as part of a large development plan, plans, transportation networks, as part of large development plans for these cities. Tonight's discussion will put forward an urban regeneration project which proposes very similar items. As, major, as, sorry, as mayor of the capital city, I am happy to see the attention placed on Port of Spain by this government. I am also overjoyed that we are able to engage our citizens in such a meaningful way about these projects and the city development. 
I therefore give my full support to the project and I look forward to its full implementation. Let's have a great and enjoyable session. And thank you, Mayor Martinez. So this project is taking place in the Port of Spain South area. So of course it's only fitting that we have the Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, the Honorable Keith Scotland here with us, to give us his thoughts and perspectives on the proposed developmental plans. Mr. Scotland. Good evening, everyone. Honorable Minister, His Worship, Mayor, all other protocols observed. The narrative for East Port of Spain and for Port of Spain South must stay focused and must stay positive. We will not have a counter narrative that is derailing us in Port of Spain South from our objectives. And one of the main objectives is to develop East Port of Spain and by extension Port of Spain South in a manner befitting a constituent of the capital city of our beloved country. By this project, this government is attempting to look after and improve the lives and living conditions of the persons who reside in East Port of Spain and the experience for those who will visit East Port of Spain, both from a micro and a macro level. In doing so, we are trying to provide jobs for young persons not so young persons, but persons who reside in East Port of Spain and the environs. And we are also taking your views on board, hence this consultation process. This project will go a long way to achieve this goal of the improvement and amelioration in the lives and living conditions of the citizens and the residents of East Port of Spain. It creates the project, it creates residential development. It means that the living spaces will be developed in a way that is in keeping with the 21st century. And when you see the plans, I am sure that you will agree with me that it is indeed worthy of an edifice that is in the capital city. It will also create commercial spaces and community spaces. When we look at commercial spaces, it brings opportunities to the entrepreneurs of East Port of Spain and particularly the environs of Piccadilly and Besson Street. It will provide community bonding. These communities need healing. We are on the process. We are on the road to healing. And nothing, nothing East Port of Spain must derail us. We must heal. We must be a cohesive and strong unit. And we must move forward for positive developments, not just for us, but for the generations to come who would look back and ask us, what have you done in East Port of Spain? It creates recreational areas, which is in keeping with international standards for East Port of Spain. When last people of East Port of Spain have you all spun a top, or pitched some marbles, or played rounders, or played hide and seek in the areas of East Port of Spain, that creates community that creates cohesion, that expels divisiveness. Also, this project shows a concentration of resources 
in East Port of Spain. That is critical. It is needed and it is timely. What it also shows is that just as this government is looking after the micro needs, ensuring that in a time of need, we provide hampers, we provide assistance for persons of East Port of Spain. We are also looking parallel at the development of East Port of Spain. Honorable Minister, I want to thank you expressly. The HDC, I want to thank you also. I want to thank all the partners. I want to thank the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago for bringing this project to East Port of Spain, and in particular, Piccadilly and Besson Street. It will be, and it will utilize, some two acres of land. That is prime land, and this is a prime development. So I say to the constituents of East Port of Spain, and particularly Piccadilly and Besson Street, grasp this opportunity with open hands and with both hands. Let us stay focused on our narrative of improving our lot, not for just ourselves, but for generations to come. And for that, I thank you, Honorable Minister, His Worship. I thank you for the support and for the partners, the HDC, UDICOT, and the East Port of Spain Development Company, on behalf of the people who reside in this great constituency of Port of Spain South, which I'm humbled to serve, I thank you. And we thank you, MP Scotland, for such great remarks on behalf of the constituents. So as you can see, the Housing Development Corporation, the HDC, is the leading coordinating agency for this project in close partnership with the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, UDICOT. As line minister, the Honorable Penelope Beckles, as Minister of Housing and Urban Development, of course, has a vested interest in the views of stakeholders and the successful rollout of this project. So at this time, we invite the Honorable Minister to deliver her remarks. Thank you very much, Chairman. And let me first of all acknowledge my fellow panelists, his Worship, the Mayor of Port of Spain, Mr. Joel Martinez, my parliamentary colleague, the Honorable Skeet Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, Ms. Giselle McFarling, Managing Director of the HDC, as well as Mr. Nigel Barrow of the HDC, and to acknowledge those joining us virtually, Senator the Honorable Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development, the Honorable Adrian Leons, Minister in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, Councillor for East Dry River, Mr. Clint Batiste, as well as the Deputy Mayor and other members of Council. And I'd also like to specially acknowledge the Chairman of the HTC, Mr. Noel Garcia, as well as other members of the Board, together, of course, with stakeholders and other interest groups, participants, viewers, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. It is my pleasure to be here at this semi-virtual public consultation, which is being held so that every voice has an opportunity to be heard regarding phase one of the Piccadilly Street Urban Regeneration Project. This project was conceived and initiated in 2017 by the Office of the Prime Minister in conjunction with the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and key agencies namely the Housing Development Corporation, the Urban Development Corporation of Trinidad and Tobago, and the East Port of Spain Development Company Limited, and approved by Cabinet in early 2019. The aim of this project is to in reinvigorate East Port of Spain as part of the master plan to revitalize the city of Port of Spain. The intent of this administration, as articulated by the Honorable Keith Rowley, Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, in his address 
at the Spotlight Forum on Urban Development Rejuvenation of the City of Port of Spain is to, and I quote, restore life and vibrancy, enhance property values, discourage criminal activity and stimulate the economy in order to give the gateway to our capital city a much needed facelift. The importance of this undertaking is to ensure that our, as our capital city transitions into a 21st century city, East Port of Spain is not left behind. We can argue with that except, we, we can argue with that except that it may have been too long in coming, but now it is finally here, and we should endeavor to see it become a reality because the benefits will far outweigh any cost that will be experienced. The vision, therefore, is to create a sustainable community utilizing a missed development concept which caters to the needs of residents. This is in keeping with the country's national development strategy Vision 2030 and the UN's new urban agenda, whereby we can build capacity and improve the economic viability of the area to foster a more inclusive, sustainable, safer, and resilient urban community, which will not only improve the quality of life for those who will live there, but ensure a positive experience for those who will visit. This will be achieved by utilizing sustainable urban practices and policies to provide appropriate infrastructure, attractive modern housing units, increased amenities, social services, and recreational spaces for residents with landscaping and use of solar panel site lighting, as well as opportunities for entrepreneurial economic activity and employment through the provision of commercial spaces. The government recognizes that in addition to improving the living condition of residents, it must also provide the impetus to encourage economic sustainability, which is key to the successful revitalization of East Port of Spain. This will go a long way in creating economic growth and financial independence. The strategic intent of the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development and its agencies is to transform and revitalize East Port of Spain in such a manner as to add value, reduce inequities, and enhance the quality and standard of living for residents of East Port of Spain and environs, while encouraging private sector investment and entrepreneurial activities. It is our view that this project will act as a catalyst for positive change within the area. In closing, I wish to urge all participants to be mindful that we have a collective responsibility to ensure the rejuvenation and revitalization of East Port of Spain through this and similar projects so that we can restore civic consciousness in the residents about the area. Thank you very much. And we thank you, Honorable Minister. Civic consciousness, such a, great, such a great thing what's needed in society. So the very purpose of this evening's consultation, of course, is to introduce the new plans or the proposed plans for the East Port of Spain Regeneration Project to you, to introduce these plans to you, the stakeholders, those of you who work and live in this area and traverse this area to see how it's going to improve based on what's being proposed within these plans. To do this, I now invite Mr. Nigel Barrow, and he's the Acting Senior Manager of Urban Planning at the HDC to make tonight's feature presentation about the project. Mr. Barrow. Good evening, all, and all protocols observed. I would like to just thank you all for coming out to this evening's public consultation on the Piccadilly and Besson Streets Urban Regeneration Project. So I will take you through a brief presentation and then we will go through or invite your questions for what you think the, the AGC has, has developed thus far and we'd like to invite your comments 
ideals as to what you would have your community look like at the end of the day. So a general overview of the upcoming presentation. I will just speak to the context, provide you with the project location, discuss the existing conditions within the community. Then we'll further discuss the project objectives. I will then walk you through the conceptual plan that we have to date, and then your opportunity to provide your questions, your advice, your issues, your ideas for the community that will be then provided to all of. So a general context. We are aware that the government of Trinidad and Tobago has fully committed to the urban revitalization of the city of Port of Spain and its environs. And the AGC continues in its urban renewal housing program to focus on the restoration as well as the regeneration of urban communities. And this is aimed at specifically improving the quality of life for the residents of these communities in East Port of Spain. So we'll be looking at the social environment, the economic environment, and of course, the physical environment. Today, the consultation is focusing on Piccadilly Street and Besson Street communities, and the development of these plans has been done in the conjunction with the UDICOT. How was AGC reached to where we are today? We would have began as the Planning and Housing Commission long before I was born in the 1960s. We then developed into the National Housing Authority, and in 2005, the Housing Development Corporation was birthed. And from since the early 60s, we would have been providing urban housing communities in and around Port of Spain. And we have some examples of these. We have Methuen Street in Woodbrook, and that would have been developed in and around 1967. Our place, Mango Rose, the John John Towers, or Shafford Court, John John Towers, and most recent, our Clifton Street housing development. So let us speak to the project location. The larger area for consideration for the regeneration is forms just a part of East Port of Spain, as is shown here on the map. Um, we will be looking at the block just north of Lavanti Road, heading south down Piccadilly Street, moving all the way down to South Quay, to the east to St. Paul Street Sporting Complex, and to the west to the Nelson Street, where we have some existing housing developments presently. To zoom in a little, we'll be dealing with Piccadilly Street in particular, and the Besson Street area in and around the existing police station, the new police station, and again south and east, sorry, to the St. Paul Street Sporting Complex. Existing conditions. As the minister would have said, this project was initiated in and around 2017. So we have done some work on it, and we would have done some reconnaissance surveys, some social surveys as well, to get a full understanding of the community. We would have found that the, the main land uses would be predominantly residential, commercial, as well as some institutional uses. In looking at the community, it is a high dense, highly densely populated area, and it has informal and unplanned development. The mayor would have also spoke to the, the age of the city over 100 years, so of course, the, some of the infrastructure in the communities has become outdated and will require some upgrades. The residents would have indicated to us that they, see under, they find that there's inadequate social and recreational spaces and amenities. Again, the age of the city will tell you that the housing stock, which houses which should have been built over 100 years, would be deteriorating and need some upgrades. The resident population also spoke to the issue of unemployment as well as lack of tenure. And tenure, we speak to the, the title and ownership of the properties and houses in which they live. 
So the project we are dealing with is the regeneration of two communities of East Port of Spain. And the aim of any form of regeneration and the aim of the HDC not, is not just to provide housing, but also to provide sustainable communities. And when we speak to regeneration, we are dealing with a comprehensive and an integrated vision and action that seeks to resolve the urban issues such as those we identified before and bring about a lasting improvement in the economic, physical, social, and environmental conditions. So the AGC is not just about building homes, we are about building sustainable communities that have long-term positive effects. So the objectives coming out of the, the, the aim of the project would be firstly to improve the living standards of the residents of East Port of Spain, improve and increase the housing stock, providing tenure for residents where possible, upgrade and improve the infrastructure, provide economic and business opportunities for residents within the East Port of Spain communities, provide skills training to make persons more employable, provide the social and community services, as well as additional open spaces and recreation, and even some urban agriculture. And of course, in doing all of this, this will en enhance the aesthetics of the community, and we will provide a greater safety through the urban design. So let's get down to the nitty gritty and focus on the conceptual plan. Identified here is the Piccadilly Street area. And specifically the Piccadilly Street Regeneration Project, we would have identified a, an area that is the least densely populated so that we could redevelop this area without with minimal displacement and with minimal or, or minimal to no displacement of residents so the question always is do we have to move out of the city do we have to move out of our homes and the simple answer to that question is no in this first phase of development that we are proposing no one will have to be relocated at any po at this point in time so we are proposing a mixed-use development to incorporate residential development, commercial, recreational, and community spaces. And we will speak to this on the next slide. The best on street housing or conceptual plan and regeneration plan is also identified just below the Piccadilly area. And again, we are seeking to provide mixed-use development with residential, commercial, and recreational spaces. We are also pro promoting and, and conceptualizing a, a, um, pr provision of a space to provide some skills training for the, for the community. The next steps and the, for future development, we will look at the Drag Brothers facility. And of course, we will have further consultation with the businessmen in this section to provide for them to provide with us for us what their hopes and their thoughts are th that are needed for development within their facility we will also look further up piccadilly street which is more densely populated we must include our existing communities along nelson street and duncan street and we will be looking at to see how we can and upgrade the, the, the developments there, we know that there are some buildings and some units that are derelict in, in nature. So we'll seek to demolish these and replace them with open green spaces so we can provide a lighter environment within the community and possibly provide some urban agriculture there as well. We also have community use sites. We know Piccadilly Street and East Port of Spain is rich with culture and as well as, as historical significance. So these community sites would include to the north, the All Stars. Lower down, we have the, the eagerly awaited new uh, Desperados, yes, Desperados Steel Orchestra, their new, their new home. In addition to, we have the site of the the St. Paul Street Sporting Complex that would need some further upgrades, as well as we have the new Drag Brothers Mall along the Independence Square. 
So we have a lot planned. We have a lot of ideas and ideals, but again, the purpose here today is to get your thoughts and your visions for your community. So what are we proposing for Piccadilly Street Regeneration Project? The slide here shows the residential development, which will include six residential buildings with a mix of three, two, as well as one bedroom units, and there will be also accessible units for persons in need of that. Along, also on the site, again, to, to, encourage and, and to encourage sustainability, we have a commercial and community area and community building that would be on the, well, the old Besson Street Police Station site. Of course, we speak to the recreational areas that are required within any and every development. And on the site as well, there is a historical building that we will be liaising and reaching out to the National Trust to get their, their assistance in the, revit in the regeneration of that building specifically. What we are seeing here is just a concept of what new Piccadilly Street can look like, the new residential accommodation for you, the residents and of the community. Again, as I say, we would have some two, a mix of two and three bedroom units, and you can see here parking as well underground or on grade. This slide just shows a simple rendering or a simple conceptual floor plan of a three bedroom, typical three bedroom unit. We will have comfortable size bedrooms, adequate washrooms, and a nice open plan concept for the living, dining, and kitchen area. The Piccadilly Commercial Plaza. We are proposing a commercial and community space that would allow for you, the residents, to, to be a part of and to practice your trade, to get involved in entrepreneurial activity, to stimulate the activity within the area. And you can see here a lovely landscape, streetscape, with the retail stores on the, on the lower levels. We have some community spaces on the upper level which could include stuff like homework centers, a hall for small gatherings when we go back to some form of normalcy, as well as we encourage in these spaces, NGOs to provide services and programs, mentorship, business training, empowerment centers. We'd encourage the NGOs to come together with the East Port of Spain community to provide these services that are necessary at this time. The Best on Street Regeneration Project, and this is specifically where we are welcoming and eager to hear your, your, your input and get your input and hear your concerns and ideas. We will be looking at providing residential development, definitely. And this is just a conceptual a rendering of the residential units and a possible streetscape for Best on Street. Here we have a courtyard, internal courtyard, where we can see children happily playing under the watchful eyes of, of members of the, the older members of the community. And as part of the Besson Street Regeneration Project, we are also proposing a micro-industrial park. And this is further to encourage employment, to encourage entrepreneurship. We are trying to provide the space, the opportunity, the area to uh, engage in manufacturing, fa fabrication facilities, to act as a trade incubator and launch a platform for you, the residents, to, to get part of the entrepreneurship activities. So products from these, a uh, 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 space like this, uh, a park like this, can be then used within even our AGC developments as we are required to refurbish and upgrade regularly the, the communities and the buildings that we have existing presently. So we'll also be reaching out to NEDCO to provide some assistance and, and guidance with regard to this form of development.
urban agriculture. It is something new. Um, previously, you'd ex expect agriculture to take place in the rural areas within, within the country, but a new and trending practice is community gardens. And we are seeking to encourage community gardens, even within our existing housing developments. We will definitely encourage it in these proposed plans that we have for eSport of Spain. And I was speaking to the eSport of Spain development company, and they have indicated that initiatives such as these do exist presently and have recently started in and around other communities in eSport of Spain. So we hope that this can continue. And as you can see on the slide as well, it's not really necessary to have large parcels of land for this, and you can have vertical gardens that utilize much less land space. Again, we discuss further community facilities, and this is a rendering of our, the brand new proposed Desperados Pan Theater, which we eagerly await to participate in and visit when we are, when the world reopens and allows us to do such. So this is the part of the presentation where I shall bow out and we encourage your questions, your ideas, your inputs as we further s develop plans for your regeneration of your community. Thank you. And thank you very much, Mr. Baru, for taking us through such a detailed presentation with vivid visuals, and of course, that explanation on the proposed plan. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time, you know. It's that time that we hear from you. Your views and opinions, of course, are very critical to this project and its successful implementation. We're happy to have our panel here with us to Give, to get your feedback, respond to your concerns, answer your questions. Um, and just to remind you at this time as well, that online, virtually, we also have Senator the Honorable Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development and Family Services, as well as a representative from the TTPS, that's Woman Superintendent Lancaster Ellis, who is also with us online um, and will form part of the panel responding to your questions this evening. So before we begin, here are a few house rules. We have two methods for participation this evening. You can either opt to type your comments into the comments chat on either Zoom or for those who are joining us via Facebook. And for those of us who are on Zoom, please use the raise your hand feature so that we can enable your audio and let you ask your questions directly. In addition to that, you're encouraged to please state your name and where you live before making your contribution and all contributions and sharing should, of course, be respectful. Your ask to be as brief as possible, as we want to allow as many persons as possible to contribute. And if you'd like to direct your question to a particular panelist, please indicate this before asking your question. The floor is now open. So residents and stakeholders, this is your time. Let's hear from you. So as our Zoom participants get ready to go, I'd like to kick things off with a question we got from social media. And I'm gonna direct this one to our last speaker, Mr. Barrow. Can you please tell us how long is this project expected to take and when will it begin? Right, again, the project is, as we understand, in the conceptual and developmental stage. However, we expect that construction, and it will be done on a phased basis, but the development of the Piccadilly Street project should take up 24 to 30, 20 to 30 months for the, for the completion. And we expect or anticipate that it could start as early as the first quarter of 2022. First quarter of 2022, it's just now. All right, so as we continue with the questions, we're gonna pull another one from social media. And this one is gonna be directed to Minister Beckles, are you ready? No. <laughs> Let's go, right? Um, 
Is this project targeted at attracting new residents to the area? Um, and if so, will this result in the area now becoming less affordable for those existing residents? You know, this, this um, project, of course, is primarily for the persons from, um, as I said, Southeast Port of Spain and environs. Okay, so at this time, we have a question coming in from Zoom. So we'd like to invite Sewell D. Noon to please pose his question, the question. Sewell, are you there with us? Can you hear me? Hello? Yep, we're hearing you. Great. Good night uh, to the minister the MP and the, uh, the mayor and others at the, on the podium. So this is my concern. The history has shown that there have been projects done in the past. There's one where you have several buildings on St. Paul Street. The projects are not well run by the HDC. Then we have projects in other areas where the HDC projects, such as in Maloney and those places, are not well run. So what is going to happen with this revitalization idea? Are they going to just, is this going to be another project that is being done and then they just like give it to the people like, you see, there's a major concern I had. In the last 18 years, I believe that East Port of Spain has been allowed to spiral out of control because it has been put in a temporary suspend manner, thereby causing persons who may have an interest in the area to be suspect whether they can invest or do anything in a place that has real richness. A last point I want to make, a brand new police station was built. And on that street, you have the Riverside Plaza building, which is a well-grandfathered project into the system, high-rise commercial. You have a historic park called the Europa Park. You have a very large church next to the police station. And on that street, you also have the historic Bethlehem Boys and Girls School, you have lots of retired police officers, very active. You also have a playground, and this is what happened. A brand new police station, national security money is spent, and the children couldn't go to play in the playground. Something about that structure didn't work well, and I'm wondering, what is going to happen in the future? Can someone address that? Because as I say, the community has been allowed to spiral out of control. And there's one last point I wish to um, make. I'm sorry, Mr. Dinoon. Um, where, yeah, where I, want to, I want to wrap this up. I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. I want to suggest to the MP and the minister, the MP does have a responsibility to ensure that the people in the community is experiencing a certain kind of standard of living and the MP and the Minister of Housing, two very dynamic people. I think you all need to speak with each other about how you can improve the conditions, living conditions of the very good people living in the community. There's need for basic law and order to also be enforced at all times for these communities to flourish now and in the future. I'm finished, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dinoon. Um, Many, a, a mouthful there, so I'm going to start with Minister Beckles. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Dino, and I want to thank you kindly for all your comments and your concerns, um, and of course, your, in particular, your concern as it relates to issues, issues of crime. Um, and I appreciate your comments as it relates to the HDC and your thoughts that you you may not have been very happy as to how things have been in the past, and let me say that I also have some concern, and I'm sure um, the managing director who's here, as well as the chairman who's listening, we commit ourselves to do better. We know that HDC is, um, we have to improve um, on our delivery of service, and 
I give you the assurance that that is one of the areas that we are addressing very seriously. Um, we have improved in many of our areas in putting in place what we call um, basically um, management structures where we actually ask persons who are living in the area because they have a stake in it. So it is something that we certainly could consider for an area um, like East Port of Spain. So you live there, you, you get involved in managing the facility and you work together with the HDC. One of the things we don't um, discuss enough, of course, is the cost um, of maintenance of buildings and the responsibility both to the HDC as well as the tenant. So that is something we're going to look at um, very closely. I want to thank you as well for identifying all the important areas, the Yoruba village, um, sharing with us that this particular area that we are dealing with is rich culturally, um, important historically. Uh, we have specifically selected that because we have recognized exactly what you have said. And that means that it's very important for us to pay close attention um, to the residents as they share with us, um, as we say, the sustainability, the, the maintenance of the rich cultural history of the area. And that is what we will incorporate as we um, do this exercise. And again, thank you very much. Okay. And I would also like to hear a word from Mr. Scotland um, as the caller addressed some issues with the actual constituency um, with itself. Mr. Dinoon, I think Mr. Dinoon is one of our constituents. If I know, I think he's a businessman also. I would want to address an issue that is very um, close to my consciousness, and it's an issue that was raised, what will be done when these um, projects come to fruition, what will happen after. I would want to encourage the residents and the people of East Port of Spain, Piccadilly Street, Besson Street, to also take charge of part of your destiny. Don't rely wholly on HDC, on UDCOT, on the East Port of Spain Development Corporation. Things such as maintenance of spaces, Form yourselves, have a susu every Saturday, come out, it builds community. It also builds a feeling of independence and taking charge of your communities. And I want to put that in the mix to partner with the government agencies to have pride in your community and also to take charge of it, as Mr. Dinoon, you have done in your spare blood. That's the first thing. Secondly, that image of the children playing that no in in the green spaces no government no police can can bring that to the, your community the people in the community must bring that to their community that is why when i started i spoke about you know how long i haven't seen a top or some marbles and i want us to start to get back apart from the games that we play online with the tablets, start to get back to that community interaction where young persons and old persons interact. So I'm, my theme in answer and in just in conjunction with the Honorable Minister said is I would want to see the residents also take charge and empower themselves for their future. And another um, theme that would have originated from the, the caller would have been in terms of the HEC process of getting projects done. Um, we'd like to invite Ms. McFarlane to comment on what makes this developmental project different from the other HEC projects to you know, communicate um, the, who's working on it and, and why should someone have confidence that this project will not follow the similar faith as, as some of the others. Excuse me, I'm sorry, your mic was off for, for the first part of, of, of your delivery. So they just asked if you can kindly um, just repeat that side of it. Mass control, we good? No? 
Okay, so we'll come back to that question as the technicians come to adjust, adjust your mic, right? Um, I want to switch a little bit to the mayor. Mayor Martinez, um, there's a question here about what is the, why, the importance of a project such as this, a rejuvenation and revitalization project, speci specifically of East Port of Spain, what does that actually mean to the city of Port of Spain as a whole? Thank you very much and good afternoon all and all the, the people who are listening out there. First of all, the, um, the city of Port of Spain has, been, has, de has, has developed in so many different areas with, without the East Port of Spain being developed properly. And uh, when um, this council came together a few years ago, we spent a lot of time on looking at the development of East Port of Spain as such and how we can bring the, 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 and rejuvenate that area, basically, and, uh, and bring people back to the city because we realize that East Port of Spain particularly is a very special part of Port of Spain. It is basically with the birthplace of Cambouli, Carnival, the Steel Pan. Uh, we have just recently been given a designation from UNESCO, the City of Music. And uh, the people of East Port of Spain are culturally rich. They, have, uh, they, have, they are the ones that have really placed Carnival on the, on the map of Trinidad and Tobago that is spawned all over the world. And uh, we have neglected those people to some extent. And the thing about it is that East Port of Spain, when you drive along Piccadilly Street, you realize how beautiful the space is. Because I've been to Cambole on a number of occasions, and I've seen how really and truly, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you see that dynamic, it's, it's so rich and beautiful. I think the Port of Spain Corporation has always felt that we can play a major part in the development of East Port of Spain. I am very happy that we have a member of parliament in Keith Scotland who has shown tremendous interest and is willing to work with the Port of Spain Corporation to be able to ensure that the city and, and, and that the, the area in which he represents is, you know, turns out to be something of, of, of really a wonder where the people can really enjoy and feel that sense of pride once again. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so before we actually go back to Ms. McFarlane, we have someone on standby, Nigel Ramsey, who's on standby via Zoom and has a question that he would like to ask. Nigel, are you there? So Nigel, we're seeing you. I think you need to unmute yourself, it looks like. I press unmute. Are you hearing me? Good to go. Yeah, we're hearing you now. Okay. My name is Nigel Ramsey, and I am a stakeholder. I'm a quantity surveyor, project manager. As a result, I'm a member of the Institute of Surveyors of Trinidad and Tobago, and their representative on the JCC, the Joint Consultative Consolidative Council for the Construction Industry. So I have, um, where is my manners? Good night to the moderator, to members of cabinet, members of parliament, council, HDC, UDCOT, residents and stakeholders. So I have two questions. One I would like to direct to Mr. Burrow and one to Ms. McFarlane. The first question is, um, uh, Mr. Barrow is, is there a larger development plan for Port of Spain which incorporates East Port of Spain development? And the second question is, in relation to the construction site, would this project be given or tendered out to one large contractor or would it be um, given out in, in, in smaller work packages where local contractors could participate? Thank you. Mr. Right. Uh, to answer your second question, first of all, I think that will be left to the MDO. Yes, that's what I believe. Okay, so, so to answer the, the first question, we have selected this section of East Port of Spain as the starting point to further develop regen a regenerative plan as part of East Port of Spain as well as a part of the greater 
revitalization plan within the full city of Port of Spain. So the revitalization plan of Port of Spain would have identified some nodes and projects that would work as catalysts for regeneration. Piccadilly Street is one of those projects, as well as the Despers Farm Theatre. So these are the starting points, and we will be liaising with the communities, definitely moving into the future, as well as the other stakeholders, East Port of Spain Development Company, in devising a plan, a full, total, encompassing plan for East Port of Spain regeneration as part of the City of Port of Spain revitalization plan. And Ms. McFarlane, yeah. you tackle the second part of the question? Yeah. So, good night. Your, your second question was in relation to procurement and whether the contract would be given out to a single provider. So as you know, we operate under the Procurement Act. And in addition to that, um, good procurement practices would require that we um, tender the job. And depending on the size, um, it may be given out as one package or in many packages. HGC also ensures that we practice um, what you may call perhaps local content, and therefore it will be our responsibility to ensure that residents in the area are given some consideration in terms of um, employment and in terms of carrying out the works thereafter. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have another question from social media that speaks to the idea of the allocation of these residential units. Um, so the question, Ms. McFarlane, this one goes to you. Will affected residents be given priority considerations for these residential units? So HGC's policy um, in relation to allocation is based on a being over 21 years old, not having previous um, property, um, qualifying based on earnings under 25,000. And in order to obtain a house, one must have an application in. And based on, on the qualifications just mentioned, um, a house can, will or can be allocated to residents. For this particular project, there, there, for this particular project, we intend to use our allocation process firstly However, we intend to also look at the residents and give them um, the ability um, to be able to um, be able to have a better chance of getting one of the houses. Okay, so thank you very much. So on the Zoom, because um, you remember we have panelists, we have on the Zoom as well. So on the Zoom tonight, as I mentioned earlier, we have the Honorable Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development and Family Services. Minister Cox, are you there? We have a question that came in just for you. <laughs> okay, so while we wait, we seem to have lost Minister Cox. We'll come back in a bit and try that again. Um, in the meantime, we have Curtis online via Zoom, who has a question he would like to ask. Curtis Edwards, are oh, you there? Yes. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes, we're hearing are you. Are you hearing me? Uh, let me say good night to the panel and congratulations. Let me just say thanks and um, for a job well done. I have three little questions I would like to ask. The first one is to the gentleman from the uh, AGC concerning the water levels when rain fall in Port of Spain. We know that water climbs over that that um that dry river. I mean literally covers it over into Port of Spain, all the way down to to the to the, to the, to the, to the South Key. Um where we, I would like to know what is the plan for that if there is any kind of mitigation in place for that. The second one goes to uh, the MP for the area, Mr. Scotland, who has been doing a good job. Congratulations to you, sir. Uh, my thing is that I heard you said what is going to happen after the project. I would like to know what will happen before the project, where education is concerned for the people in the area, preparing them 
for a, 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 a mega project like this. So that we, they, 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 we don't just go in there and use it up and it, it, we fall right back into the old system. So I think I think what is needed here is, is education in entrepreneurship and academics and sports and everything that you plan to do to, to enhance the project to um to really make sure it works properly and that people are prepared for such of um facility when it do comes. My third question is to the mayor for the spin. Um uh, Mr. Mayor, East for the spin may look nice, but I have a problem with Polar Spain itself. What is your plans for all these vagrants in town? Sorry, homeless. I don't say the word vagrants for you, homeless people. What are the plans for them? I mean, we walk on Frederick Street and see human waste on Frederick Street. It's that bad now. I would like to know what are your plans to really get the city going. Okay, well, thank, thank you, you very much, Curtis. We got your three questions. So the first question to Mr. Barrow. Tell us about any plans in this development um, about water levels and rainfall. Well, firstly, the agency is not specifically responsible for, for the infrastructure work within the city. But however, any form of regeneration plan and any development plan would, we would definitely liaise with all the stakeholders, specifically being the Ministry of Works and Transport who will deal with flooding as well as the city corporation in seeking to resolve the issues of flooding. We know it's a major issue. So infrastructure upgrades and development work must take place on the infrastructure for, for a, a development plan or regeneration or housing plan to have any form of success. So as I said, we will definitely be liaising with the all other agencies to form and to find solutions to these problems. Okay, and the second question that Mr. That um, Curtis had went to the MP, Mr. Scotland. It was about what's happening post this development, post the construction of these buildings and care for the area. If, if I understand it, I, I thought he said pre with respect to education, but even post, it, it, it doesn't matter because what, what we want to say is that um, this process that we're engaged in now tonight, that is part of the education process to educate the residents and the persons who um, uh, have a stake in East Port of Spain as to what is to transpire. Ongoing, I say that the, the rich knowledge and the history of residents of East Port of Spain, they may need formal lessons in entrepreneurship, but that's all you know just formal lessons and maybe accounting, but I cannot envision a people more innovative who have done so much with less that would need that I or anyone could teach them on entrepreneurship, save and accept the formal skills. And with respect to post, it will be an ongoing process. I want to share this with Trinidad and Tobago. The Honorable Minister and His Worship the Mayor really are committed to this project. Before we came, persons of Nelson and Duncan Street will know that we promised them a visit just before the onset of the pandemic. I was speaking to the Honorable Minister about it before, but when before we came online, the Honorable Minister said to me, you know what we're going to do? If we can't do it by Zoom, we will do it in small numbers. And this is not a rehearsed script. We have just discussed it. And His Worship the Mayor says, look, we are on board. So what I'm saying is that once you have persons that are committed, the education process will be ongoing. I'm sure that my councillors, well, the councillors, sorry, um, Councillor Batiste, Sylvester, um, Councillor Bristol, um, they are on board, Councillor Frederick. Though those are the councillors, yes, His Worship. And we are willing to be there as part of the educational process and to have people in Port of Spain experience a nicer living environment. Very nice. And the third question was directed to His Worship, Mayor Martinez. Um, and that question specifically was about the overall um, aesthetics of the city. Well, you know, the uh, homelessness has been with us for, for some time. And uh, the CSDP, CSDP uh, building, where it's, which is a car park that has housed the homeless, has been there for about 25 years. And uh, Yet still, it has not done the job because we are seeing homelessness all over the city. My council and the Port of Spain Corporation 
has been dogged with, the, with the, the fact that we have been trying to do something about it. Fortunately, we have a minister in, in, in the Ministry of Social Development and Family Services in Donna Cox, who I have had a number of discussions with, and we are eagerly looking at a way in which to solve uh, that pandemic, basically, you know, because it is, um, it is, uh, it is not easy for a homeless person to, to, to live on the streets of Port of Spain. We don't like seeing it, and they don't like being there. And uh, so that we have, been, we have been constantly having our co uh, conversations on it. We have uh, engaged a number of NGOs, including uh, uh, the Homeless Assistance Office. And only today, we had a conversation with regard to how are we going about the process to be able to assist the homeless people. We have done, we have, we've, we've, um, we've done a number of things, uh, uh, we have had a number of discussions and we have done a number of, 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 of ideas have come about. And uh, um, sh very shortly, uh, if, you, if, the, if we were able to get the minister on the line, she would have told you that we, the social development understood. ministry is actually uh, looking, uh, do, has they have, they have, they have looked at a, a number of places and they have zeroed in on, 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 a, on, a, on a building of which they are looking to, to bring uh, uh, that, that, that thing to fruition uh, very shortly. Thank you. So let's bring Minister Cox in, because we heard that we would have just gotten her back on the line. Good evening, Minister Cox. Thank you. Good evening, and good evening to all. Thank you. And so on, on, we're on the topic of homeless individuals and a shelter for displaced persons within the city. Can you shed some light on, on that for us? Yes, I heard the mayor, and um, I want to concur with what he has been saying. But what happened is that the, we have been having a lot of meetings with our stakeholders, key stakeholders, including the Ministry of Health, the mayor's office, and we have been looking for a suitable place to accommodate the homeless because we know that um, where they are presently, they need to move soon. And we found a place, we have zeroed in on, on a, an area, and we are just hoping that very soon, we would be able to rid the city of the homeless. But of course, what I want to say is that moving the homeless requires a collaborative approach. So I've also been having meetings with the Minister of Housing, and they are assisting us in locating a suitable place. And I want to say too that we cannot just, uh, the Ministry of Social Development cannot just go and take persons off the streets. It may seem as an easy task, but it is not. It definitely requires a collaborative approach, including the Ministry of Health, because persons must be assessed first. It is not everyone who is on the street has a mental issue. So therefore, in keeping with the national standards, they must be assessed. So we must first have an assessment center set up so that persons can be assessed. There are those who may be, um, they may be on the street because of substance abuse. So when that is, is determined, then of course we will have to take them to the right area. But hopefully um, with the approach that we have taken, we have had a few key stakeholder meetings and we have had um, very good collaboration with um, our stakeholders and we are hoping that we will be able to move them off the street soon. Thank you very much, Minister Cox. Um, at this time, since we are on Zoom, we're going to keep it there. We have another question coming in um, from Antonio Clement via Zoom. Antonio, are you there? Good night. Good night. I'm here. Good night. Good night, uh, Member Parliament of Scotland. Good night, everybody. I have a few questions. Um, in terms of the history with the Cambly riots, we must also mention across from the Cambly riots, which is the two gingerbread houses. What is what is the what are the what is the future for the gingerbread houses? Also, another historical site, which is the Piccadilly Government Primary School. What is the future for Piccadilly Government Primary School? Also, you stated that well, not you, but someone stated that. The people will not be relocated at this moment. When will these people be relocated? Where will they be relocated? And by chance, what are the expenses 
possible expenses of that relocation. Thank you for your patience. Okay, and thank you, Antonio. So, a couple questions there. Um, I would like to possibly through this one, who's going to take it? HEC, MP, we're talking about the historical sites within the area. He's added the gingerbread houses, um, the primary schools and stuff like that. Um, can we get your comments on that? Well, the historical sites, and His Worship will concur, we, we have no plans to demolish those. In fact, the plans are subject, of course, to resources to um, refurbish and to ensure that they are kept as part of our history and because that is exactly what they are and, and so it's a development that is running parallel and with respect to the schools did he mention which school he's talking about um he said the government primary school i believe piccadilly government piccadilly government we, well i haven't heard anything that will say that these school that, that school will be um in any way um, closed it down. In, in fact, all the schools from um, Nelson Street Boys and Girls, Bethlehem Boys and Girls, all the, and the, the RC schools, all of them are up and running and we are trying to ensure that we keep the primary schools open so that persons who live in the area, apart from having nice houses, can also have their children educated very close to home. Okay. So another question coming in, um, and this one goes to the representatives from the HDC. Um, the question is, what will happen, um, and it follows on Antonio's question in terms of, will the residents of the Besson Street and Piccadilly areas be displaced or inconvenienced by this construction project? See, so they're going back and forth. Oh. Mr. Oh. Barrow. So again, in the first phase of development, there will be there's no required displacement. The idea is in providing additional housing units within the area, the possibility of relocating persons within Piccadilly and Besson Street to the newly developed Piccadilly Street Regeneration Project to that residential site. That is possible. That is a possible relocation strategy that would then allow for further development of alternative areas from where those persons may have resided before. And since we're on the topic of these actual um, units themselves, uh, question coming in, what are the estimated selling prices? What price ranges are we looking at um, if available for these residential units? Ms. McFarlane. Right. So currently we have no prices for the for these units. We are in consultation stage and we are trying to ascertain um, what are the uses and what the residents would, would like to have. The proposed project comprises of three bedrooms, two and one bedroom units. And um, after our consultation, we would then engage the architects and go through the tendering procedure and then the cost, is, the cost will be determined. So at this point, there's no costs to um, be placed on any of the units. Mr. Scotland, you look like you had something you wanted to add there. No, I am just having a word with the um, Honorable Minister. <laughs> That's, That's the urgency. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Thank you very much. So guys, we hope you're really enjoying how this is going and the opportunity for you to ask your questions. Be sure to put your questions in the chat box. Interact with our panelists. They're here to, to respond to your concerns. And at this time, we have another participant on the Zoom Live. Um, we threw it to Claire Terry. Claire, are you there? Yes, I am. Hi, Claire. Good night to the panel. Um, all protocols in place. Um, my, well, my name is Claire Terry. I live at 84 Piccadilly Street, which is an HTC compound for all my life. Okay, so this this whole situation come like a deja vu to me because I was really young when the same thing happened to to us in Mango Rose, right? We we were, were relocated and we came back to beautiful, beautiful units, right? Um, but I just have a suggestion 
the corner of Prince and Piccadilly Street. I would love to see that widen because all my life and being a driver, that corner there is very, very small compared to when you go on the greens, where the Cambule um, enactment take place, the wide area, right? And going down to Besson Street and Piccadilly Street, the same thing happened at that particular intersection. I know this could be a works transport decision, but I am just putting it in the mix, right? Um, my other suggestion or observant is the East Dry River. I live directly east of the river, so I see everything that goes on in the river. In my early years, the river was our play, play park, playground, many footballers, national, many cricketers, everybody, we used to go down in there. Trust me. And it was clean and tidy. And big leagues used to be going on in that dry river. Now it really hurts me to see how the dry river is. And coming now to rejuvenate the area, I would like to know or see something fruitful come out of that dry river. Thank you. Okay, anyone would like to comment on that? Yeah. Mayor Martinez? I I would like to tell uh, Claire, first of all, I want to congratulate you for bringing up some, some really nostalgic moments in the city of Port of Spain, especially uh, East Port of Spain. Uh, just to, to the, and for, the, for the last couple of days, I have passed, I've driven down Charlotte Street and went across into Piccadilly Street to, to, uh, to go down there by the, by the homeless center area. And, uh, I know exactly the spot that she's talking about because I think this, I have thought the same thing and I said I would like to bring that up with the Ministry of Works because it's really a, a narrow area that leads into the area where your office is um, MP. And the thing about it is that the, if, if, if that is done and they really look to develop that space there, it, it will change the dynamic of Piccadilly Street in such a miraculous way. And the people of East Port of Spain deserve nothing better than that. I, I think, I think it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us to do it now. And, um, and I, I thank Claire for, for that. I like what, when she spoke about the fact that, you know, the East Rye River was, the play, was really their playground, right? Where, where, um, and you talked about it in, in your presentation about, you know, things like that. And maybe we should reconsider. Maybe we should look at the fact because the Port of Spain Corporation's mandate now is really to clean the city. And cleaning, you know, and, and we, we, we can collaborate, and we have done that with the Ministry of Works with regard to collaborating the cleaning of our watercourses. And it is the dry river, except for when, you know, the, 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 the rush of water comes down, and you hear, uh, where, you remember when Kitchener sang that song about everything coming down in the river? Well, apart from that, it's dry but we have not really maintained it properly as a, a, and that's the, as the fault of the Ministry of Works, but it is also us because we are the custodians of the city and we should really have done better than that. Uh, so Claire, I really, I re <laughs> really appreciate your, um, your contributions and I think we should really take uh, what she has said and add it to our list of things that we can do to really add the, to the value of the East Port of Spain area. Very nice, thank you. So we have an, another person coming to us live via Zoom. We now invite Kurt Charles to ask his questions of the panel. Good evening, Kurt. Kurt, I believe you're muted from what I'm seeing. No, he's not. Yeah, he's muted now. Kurt? Hello, good night. Good night. Um, I just came to say, I want to say good night to everybody, everybody from the parliament, every, all the viewers, and so forth, right? Um, my contribution to this, I am living 39 Piccadilly Street. Um, I own a private property, but I rent here, right? Um, 
I want to know what is the the views all I have on people like who writing on private properties. And um, I want to know, will we be able to get an AGC house in, 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 in prior to the situation that is taking place right now, right? And number two is like, um, will Olya be addressing the, the, the area properly pertaining to, to policing and so forth? Because remember, it's, it's, it's different type of activities is be taking place. I don't know if Olya will be upgrading that right and we have to deal like with the rivers and so forth because we don't want like when all the upgrade the place we started to get flood out and all these different type of things so this is my contribution okay, thank you thank you very much kurt um at first question we'd like to direct to the panel minister beckles um we're talking about views on of residents on various private properties and being able to um, treat with them well, I mean, um, as I understand it from her, she said she's on renting on, on I. I mean, if it is that um, those particular properties are, are parcels of land that, for example, the EGC needs to acquire, let's say as an example, then obviously um, the appropriate compensation will have to be paid, if at all. Um, you need uh, to acquire private property. And I mean, if, the, if it is that uh, I think the MD indicated that a person is interested in one of the apartments or properties, then there is the particular procedure that uh, policy that is in place for the purposes of allocating houses. Um, I also wanted, um, she raised the issue of flooding and I think it was Mr. Dinoon who also spoke about the issue of water and the impact and I was actually trying to, to quickly um, send off a message there to my colleague, the Minister of Work, since this is coming up over and over um, to see whether or not he's on listening. Because obviously, um, Claire spoke about the dry, ver dry river, but a lot of people are talking about flooding, a lot of people are talking about what is the impact as it relates to water and water quality. Uh, and that is the purpose, of course, of the consultation. I mean, there would be, at some point in time, we'd have to of course, you have to apply for the CC and you will have to satisfy all these issues relating to flooding, relating to drainage, and those matters will have to be addressed as and when those matters come up. Okay, thank you very much. Um, on, on, in that same vein, I would like to invite Ms. McFarlane to tell us a bit in terms of HCC's vision for um, residents like Claire who are renting on a property versus home ownership and stuff like that. How does the AGC treat with that in this sort of context? Okay, so as you know, the AGC's mandate is to build affordable homes for the citizens of Trinidad and Tobago. And in doing so, we would ensure that the homes, the, the homes that are built, are, are, it does include communities and um, other amenities that are required by the residents. The application process for this um, will, will require that the residents um, provide the information um, to be able to qualify for such homes. Okay. Thank you very much, Ms. McFarlane. Um, I see we have another person coming on the live. We're looking for Zara Healy. Are you there with us? We understand you have a question from our Zoom participants. Yes, I'm here. Good evening. Um, okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. Um, uh, good evening to the panel. And um, thank you uh, for hosting this forum. I also want to say um, thank you to the mayor for speaking about Cambolay. I, I represent um, the group that produces Cambolay, and I see it has been mentioned many times. Um, so um, pleased to know that uh, we have been having a, a positive effect in the community. So very quickly, just two questions. Um, 
we've heard a great deal about recreation, um, but our concern is that um, we would like to hear a bit more about cultural empowerment. So we'd like to find out, are there specific plans to incorporate culture, heritage, and the arts as an empowering force in a permanent way to celebrate carnival in the area, um, to link culture and the arts to entrepreneurship opportunities, um, because it, we feel it's important to emphasize um, that there is a link there, um, to recognize the importance of culture and the arts and heritage and quality of life and, and healing that the MP spoke about. Um, from an educational point of view, to properly um, document the um, the foundation aspect of culture and heritage in that particular area, whether it's through street signs, um, living museums, um, generational projects, um, for instance, encouraging the older ones to share their knowledge of the area with the younger ones. And then a second question in the long term, are there going to be plans to establish a training institute for our plan? Thank you. Th thank you very much, Dara. Two really great questions, of course, culturally grounded. So I'm going to direct the first question to our friends from the HDC um, in terms of cultural, because I, I know in Mr. Barrow's presentation, he spoke about the Desperados Panyard and mentioned Trinidad All Stars. So um, to resp in response to Dara, what do you, uh, can you tell us about cultural empowerment, the arts, heritage, and healing? Well, it is the, the, the aim of the HDC, and we understand and embrace the cultural history and the historical significance of the area. Um, again, the AGC provides homes and sustainable communities and spaces. So what we would want to encourage is that the NGOs and Miss, can you remember her name? Dara Healy. And Dara, Healy. Dara, Dara Healy. And we, are, we want to encourage you, Dara, and it's as part of further consultation, that you provide us with issues, well not issues, with ideas as to how we can include, whether it be spaces for these cultural and artistic entrepreneurship, as well as the training facilities and training spaces, and again, to encourage other NGOs to be partner with the agency in, these, in such developments, providing the necessary training facilities, et cetera, and programs so that the community will benefit from it. Yeah, and as we start to wrap up this session, I want to go to the MP for the area. Um, I'm very grateful for the contribution, um, the last um, caller. This pandemic has given us an opportunity to have conversations with groups that we may not have had, and in an intimate way, in the, in the sense that he, you know, we can spend time and of a minister as worship the mayor, do you know that there are 20 registered pan sides and pan organizations in Port of Spain South? I found that out two zero. Part of our process and in talking to the membership and the persons who are involved, we found out that the, the pan yards are used as training grounds for the, our young minds. And we want to start with that development process. Um, the development of the Desperados at All Stars, a lot happens, but because of the pandemic, it's not happening anymore. But we intend to build. So what I would suggest is that, through His Worship, I know you have a number, you've already you seen to know her. We want to engage you and other um, stakeholders in order to have your input in the development of culture the, and the rich culture that is East Port of Spain and in fact Port of Spain South and by extension Trinidad and Tobago. We don't lay claim to it. We, we just say that, you know, we have produced a plethora and a lot of persons. So engage us, but certainly that will form part of any development in Piccadilly Street and Besson Street. And we intend to keep that going and develop it. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Scotland, Let MP for the year. Something to what um, the Member of Parliament was saying. Uh, first of all, the, she is the daughter of the renowned Pearl and Two Springer, who, uh, who puts on the, the Cambole, uh Festival uh, at, um, at, the, um, at the Piccadilly Corner. 
the thing about it is that, as, as, you, as I said earlier, I have been to Kabale on a number of occasions already, and every year I truly appreciate it because I carry a lot of guests that actually didn't know about it. It starts at 4 o'clock in the morning, and it's really a wonderful event. It's, it, it's, it's what you call street theater, and it's, uh, it's the, 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 the theater itself is the street, and the way the whole set is created, it's really a dynamic, uh, sub, uh, it, it, it gives that sense of, of, of great cultural respect for the area. And I think that we need to, 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 to build on that, all right? Uh, I just wanted to say though that uh, by All Stars, we have what you call the Neville Jules Junction now, which is named after uh, one of our cultural icons. We have a carnival museum that is supposed to be taking place on Charlotte Street, which is Charlotte and Duke Street, where the old penny bank was. And uh, we are looking at creating something called a hall of, a walk of fame. A walk of fame where, you know, just like Hollywood, you have that, um, that, that but we want to do it with our local artists. Create ambient music along the Brian Laura Promenade. And, if, and also, there was a discussion at some stage where we should make that area uh, uh, like part of what you call the National Trust and create Campbell Day Corner. And, uh, and, and that's where, that, I think that's where she's going because the thing about it is that we don't, we don't treasure these things. We leave it, uh, we leave it uh, to, to when somebody maybe internationally picks it up and then we want to, to pedal back and try and find out like what, you, what, what we had with Juve Rum, you know? The thing about it is that we need to claim our spaces. We need to build our culture because if we have no culture, we have nothing. And that's, to me, one of the most important areas. We are building the culture while we are putting up the beautiful buildings. I think HDC has done a fantastic job over the years. If you look at the type of buildings that HDC have put up within the last couple of years, it's phenomenal. And it has made a lot of homes for a lot of people who never thought they would find themselves in a beautiful apartment, you know, somewhere in the city of Port of Spain. And in order to bring people back to any city, you have to transform and you have to be able to build residence for people to enjoy the facilities of the city of Port of Spain. We need to do that and this is the time. Okay, thank you very much. And now we're going to have our final caller this evening, Miss Lizelle Gastaldo. Are you there? Also joining us live Hello, via night. Zoom this evening. Good evening, Lizelle. Hello, good night. Good night. Good night. You can go ahead and ask good your question to the panel. Okay, thank you so much for this forum. I appreciate this so much. My name is Lizelle Gastaldo. And I live at Piccadilly Lane, which is in the back of the Seventh-day Adventist Church and also in the back of the gingerbread houses. My question is, does this revitalization project also include our area? Most importantly, our area, which is Piccadilly Lane, we experience a lot of landslides. My question is, is the HEC and the UDCAT of aware of this issue and are they address are they establishing any measures to address and alleviate this problem thank you thank you very much lizelle so to our reps from the hcc mr barrow mm -hmm. uh, as part of the reconnaissance mission earlier and back in 2018 we would have visited that piccadilly lane site um I was not aware, we were not aware of the issues of the landslides, but we have, we were also aware that there is some available space for development in, a, in and around Piccadilly Lane. So we would be definitely looking at that as a second phase to the Piccadilly Street Regeneration Project. Um, however, we will need to consult with the relevant ministries and agencies with respect to the solve any problem of the landslides that we have at present that you indicated. Okay. Can I, can I just... Um... Yeah, I, I just want to thank Lizelle for that and for that very, very important question. And that's really what the consultation is all about. So that whenever, um, you know, there may be issues we are not aware of. And so we really thank you for that. But I, 
I wanted to use the opportunity to say in relation to some of the, the previous discussions which had to do with signage and so the East Port of Spain um, Development Company which falls under the Ministry of Housing, they have been very instrumental in working with the city in terms of the development of, of the signage. So that what uh, Ms. Healy mentioned a while ago in terms of how do you recognize some of the stalwarts, we would see that there are several um, signs that have already been um, you know, put up in, in the East Port of Spain area to acknowledge the work of um, and the, the cultural icons. Uh, I, as a matter of fact, the first question that we dealt with talked about the Yoruba village, we talked about the Canberley, the Gingerbread House and all the, and I, I think the Member of Parliament um, listed the, the multiplicity of buildings there. Uh, of course, the incorporation of the, um, the design of the Desperados um, Steel Orchestra is critical and we certainly look forward to the continued uh, discussions and concerns, dreams and suggestion and today is actually uh, the first of such discussion. All right, thank you very much, Minister Beckles. And of course, thank you to all of our participants. Such a great way to bring the curtains down on this part of this evening with, of course, um, a, a question which really um, epitomizes what this consultation is about, bringing information and an exchange of information between, um, of course, the residents and the stakeholders of the P Piccadilly and Besson Street area, um, of course, with our panel. So at this time, I would like to thank all of our panelists for participating in this session, as well as everyone out there who would have participated. And as we bring this part of our engagement this evening to a close, I now invite the HCC's Managing Director, Ms. Jaisal McFarlane, to tell us about the next steps. Ms. McFarlane. Hi, afternoon again. So the next steps will be after this consultation um, to gather all the information that was presented this afternoon in order to determine what we are required to do. Um, and you will hear from us shortly. Okay, hey, thank you very much. And I believe you also have some closing remarks. Please allow me to recognize His Lordship, Joel Martinez, Mayor of the City of Port of Spain, the Honorable Penelope Beckles, our Line Minister, Minister of Housing and Urban Development, Senator the Honorable Donna Cox, Minister of Social Development and Family Services here with us on Zoom, the Honorable Adrian Leons, Minister in the Ministry of Housing and Urban Development, on Zoom with us, Mr. Keith Scotland, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, Councillors and Members of the Port of Spain City Corporation, Mr. Noel Garcia, Chairman of the AGC and UDICUT here with us on Zoom, as well as members of the Board of the HDC, other panelists, stakeholders and interest groups, participants and viewers, a pleasant good evening to you all. We have had a very productive session, haven't we? I must say that I am heartened by the participation, lively discussion, and overall interest shown in today's consultation. Over the past few decades, a number of infrastructural projects were spearheaded by the HGC in this area, the most recent being the Clifton Tower community. However, I am sure many of you would agree that there needs to be a plan for the holistic development of East Port of Spain. This project presented to you this evening is the first part of a detailed comprehensive program that is being proposed for all who live and work in these communities. The Piccadilly and Besson Street East Port of Spain Urban Regeneration Project, which is part of the Port of Spain Revitalization Program will enhance the rehab and rehabilitate this part of the city, improve the facade and living conditions of those who desire to live in this area, and is expected to encourage entrepreneurship, 
employment opportunities and economic growth. As the agency charged with overseeing this phase, we wish to assure residents that this consultation is the first of many engagement initiatives which will be undertaken as the project is implemented. It is our desire to engage in open, honest communication between residents and stakeholders. We therefore look forward to your ongoing interest and participation. I therefore wish to thank the residents who participated in this evening's session and posed questions. I know there may have been other activities that could have easily held your interest, but you chose to remain with us for the duration of this session. The frank and honest exchange of information certainly provided us all with additional insight which will be taken into consideration as we move forward with this project. To our panelists and presenters, I appreciate the knowledge and technical skills you provided to this forum. I must also extend appreciation to the Mayor of Port of Spain, Member of Parliament for Port of Spain South, and other members of Parliament who augmented this evening's session. Your contributions were appreciated as well and well received. There were other stakeholders who were present for the session, such as the Deputy Mayor of Port of Spain, the CEO of Port of Spain City Corporation, Women Superintendent Lancaster Ellis, and others. I thank you. I must also extend appreciation to the Honorable Penelope Beckles, who gave an overarching perspective of the project and its benefits to citizens, residents, and stakeholders. It is my hope that these combined efforts provided greater perspective and clarity to those who may have not been too familiar with the project which is being proposed. Ladies and gentlemen, our engagement with you on issues related to this project will not end today. We will continue to post information on our website, social media platforms, via notices, and conduct other forms of engagement to ensure that you are kept in the loop at the various stages of this project. I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and continue to be safe. Thank you. Thank you, MD. So ladies and gentlemen, as we bring the curtains down on this evening's event, I thank you all for spending the evening with us. Um, please stay tuned to the various forms of media and the HEC's social media platforms to keep up to date with developments on this project. And if you have more questions, because we know that might happen, um, and the consultation really doesn't end there, feel free to email consultation at hdc.gov.tt. That's consultation at hdc.gov.tt. Um, so your questions can be addressed there. I've been your host, Colin Graves. It's definitely been my pleasure spending this evening with you. And I urge you to please continue to follow the COVID-19 public health guidelines to protect yourselves and your loved ones. Remember, follow the three W's. Wear your mask, watch your, watch your distance, wash your hands. And please stay safe. Until next time, good night and goodbye. <laughs>